I just got back from a trip from the United States. And in this video, I want to share with you nine reverse culture shocks I experienced in going back. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Patricia Brooks. I am an American expat living in the South of France for the past six years. And I help women who are ready to start the next chapters of their lives living in a foreign country move through self-doubt, fear, so that they can finally get to living in their dream country. And on this channel, I share content about living in France, moving abroad, and finding that confidence and courage to live life on your terms. So if that is something that appeals to you, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell because from time to time, I do go live and you don't want to miss that. All right. The first reverse culture shock was at the airport. I went to the ladies room at Atlanta airport and I was inside the stall looking out and I was really taken aback by the gaps between the stall door and the frame. This is something I heard foreigners complain about for about the U.S., but it was not anything that ever bothered me because I'd grown up with that kind of stall. But after six years of being in France, where there is no gap between the door and the frame of the bathroom door, and where the stall doors and walls are much longer, almost going to the ground, um, this was a little bit disconcerting because the gaps are pretty big. So that is the first culture shock I had. The second one has to do with gambling. It seems like casinos are everywhere. I know at least in Virginia, there were commercials for this Rosie's Casino uh, throughout Virginia. And that surprised me because that was not the case six years ago. Additionally, there are what they were calling gray machines in convenience stores in Virginia. Now, a gray machine is a gaming machine that has been placed in convenience stores throughout Virginia, and these are not legal. And so they have been shut down for the time being. And there were commercials talking about whether or not they're, they should be legal because it's going to be on the ballot. There were commercials for the plus side and there were commercials for the downside. And to me, it was just a little bit startling to see that gambling is just so mainstream in the U.S. Another way people can gamble in the U.S. is on NFL football games. Now, that was not the case when I left six years ago. But now my friends were telling me that football season and during football games, there are commercials to bet on the game. And it just feels a little bit like that could be a slippery slope. And so that was a shocker to me. Now, talking about commercials, there were a few commercials that surprised me. Uh, not that they didn't exist before when I was living there, but I'd grown unaccustomed to seeing them on TV. And so when I saw them, they were a little shocking. One of them is debt reduction commercials. Now, debt reduction commercials are for people who are in debt and who would like to pay less than they owe. And these companies are around to help you negotiate with your creditors so that you can pay less. Here in France, credit cards are a thing, but they are not as widespread as they are in the U.S. And most people just use a debit card. The money comes out of their checking account. And so getting too far into debt is not so much of a problem here. Another type of commercial that surprised me, even though, as I said, did exist while I was, was living there, were commercials for lawyers and, you know, personal injury lawyers. And it seemed like one after the other. And some of them are really kind of hokey. And I can't imagine anybody going to these people, but they continue to exist. And so that was a surprise for me as well. Drug commercials. Over-the-counter drug commercials, prescription drug commercials seem to be so very prevalent and persistent 
And that was troubling to me because I know now how psychology works, how we can be programmed into doing things and to thinking certain things, creating uh, new beliefs in our minds. And so seeing commercials that list so many symptoms and seeing those repeated over and over again, where somebody might get the idea that they have a certain disease or condition and they're being encouraged to go to their doctor to see if they have this condition so they can get this prescription medication whose side effects are severe, can be severe up to and including death. And the people on the commercials are singing and dancing like it's a musical just felt Ah, I don't know. Icky is the word. Just felt didn't feel good to me. And while I was in the United States before these commercials existed, but I think I was a little less tuned into them because, well, they just were. And now here in France, they aren't a thing. You don't have drug commercials on TV. So number four are storage facilities. Now in France, I've been told storage facilities exist. And I think I might have seen one here in France, but they are not as prevalent as they are in the United States. There is not a storage facility on every corner here and one being built so that stuff can be housed. I was at my financial advisor's office and just outside his window, there was some construction and I asked him, what, what, are, you, what are they building there? And he said, oh, that's just another storage facility. It was massive. It's going to be massive. And it just surprises me that that industry continues to grow and expand at the rate that it does, that there's so people have so much stuff that there is a demand for all of this extra storage space. Number five. Now, I have complained about mail delivery here in France. And somebody said, well, maybe it's just where you are that you're having trouble because I live in France and I don't have any trouble with mail delivery. And that could very well be the case. But when I was living in the United States, I never had a problem. And so it surprised me to hear my friends complaining about how mail delivery service, the United States Postal Service, seems to be less effective, less efficient, and the cost of stamps has gone up every year. And in fact, it's such a problem that there was a city council meeting about mail delivery and what could be done about it. So it really surprised me to hear that from not just one friend, but several, and to see that meeting that was scheduled in city council was a little bit disturbing. Number six has to do with the way that Richmonders and maybe Americans, I don't know if this is just something that's going on in Richmond or if this is a problem in other states as well, other cities and states as well. But my friends were telling me, you know, if you're out on the road here, be careful. When you're at a stoplight and your light turns green, wait because people have a tendency to run red lights. And I was out and about and I was walking and I saw, I was in downtown Richmond and I saw the light turn red and it was red for a couple of seconds. And this truck just came barreling through like they had a green light. And I was just like, what? Did I just see that? And so that seems to be something that has gotten worse since I left. Let me know if you are living in the United States, if you've noticed more people running red lights or if in your area, what area you're in, or if that just seems to be a Richmond thing. All right. Number seven has to do with restaurants and eating out. Now, I did not go out to eat a whole lot, maybe two or three times the whole time I was in Richmond. But one of the things I was keenly aware of was how I felt rushed. Now, the server brought us our meals. And then, you know, after we'd had, you know, two bites of our food, came by and asked how things were, and then plopped down 
the check, right? Didn't wait until we had finished eating, you know, our main course to see if we wanted anything else. Just put the check down, like, you know, hurry up and eat. Now, I remember when I first moved to France, it was a little bit disconcerting to sit at a restaurant and wait for a check that would never come. You always have to ask, always have to ask the waiter or go up and pay. But now I have grown accustomed to that and actually like it because I don't feel rushed. And that that feels good, not feeling rushed, to feel like, okay, you're here, you're a guest, and we want you to stay as long as you like. So that was something that I didn't anticipate feeling, but did this time. Number eight has to do with the selection of products that are in stores in the United States, from cereals to feminine hygiene products to ice cream. There are seem to be a million and one options. And I used to think that was a good thing. But this time around, it caused me to have some decision fatigue, you know, standing in the aisle and thinking, oh, I could have any of these selection and which one should I get? It was like, oh, I understand now why some people have a hard time making decisions. Having too many choices can be overwhelming. Number nine, the final thing that was different for me when I went back to the United States was when I was paying cash for something and I was using bills and coins, I had to stop and do a double take and look at the coins that I was getting ready to pay with a second time because I wasn't sure what amount they were. Now, this is funny because when I first moved to France, I felt like I was, you know, a nine or 10 year old who was going to the store for for the very first times and just looking at the coins and turning them over and seeing what denomination it was and then handing it to the clerk slowly because that's how it was when I landed in France. I didn't know what the coins were. Is that a 10 cent piece? Is that a 20 cent piece? But now back in the States, I had to stop and the the bill came to $3.51. And so I had $3 and I was pretty sure I had the exact change. And so I pulled out the coins and I had to look at the quarters twice. Was that a 25 cent piece? And maybe part of that was because we don't have a 25 cent piece here in France. But um, the size was just a little off to me. I wasn't quite sure. But I gave the clerk exact change, what I thought was exact change. He took it, didn't say, oh, you gave me too much. You gave me too little. So I guess it was right. But that just goes to show you that over time, you can get adjusted or acclimated to a different way of being because I paid with those coins for most of my life. And now I am looking at them a second time because I'm unsure what which coins they are. So now that is all I have for you today. Which one of these reverse culture shocks surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.